the Jukes! What's up guys, it's the Lord Divine, and welcome to another episode of One Shot, the show where I take a look at a game and let you know what I think about it. Today we're going to be taking a look at Crypt of the Necrodancer. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a rhythm-based roguelike developed by the indie studio Brace Yourself Games. You play as a girl trying to navigate a dungeon to get back her heart from an evil necrodancer. Like most roguelike games, there's randomly generated levels, items, enemies, and permadeath. Collect coins from dead enemies to buy items from shop. So what sets this apart from any other roguelike? Gameplay centers around the need to time all your actions to the beat of the music playing. Want to move right? Gotta do it to the beat. Want to attack an enemy? Move into him on the beat. You want to pick up an item? You guessed it, on the beat. Controls are super simple and rather than and getting in the way, they lend themselves to the rhythm of the game. Movement and attacking is done through the directional keys, while items are used by pressing combinations. For example, eating food to restore health can be done by pressing left and up. The challenge in Necrodancer centers around the need to learn about the enemies. You see enemies move, attack, and use abilities to the beat just like you do. Charging in without knowing how to react is a recipe for quick death. The various items you can collect along the way complicate matters by changing your attack pattern, movement, and requiring precise timing position. If your first forays into Necrodancer don't go your way, don't worry. You can unlock Unlock new and powerful items in the game's lobby through the acquisition of diamonds in your failed attempts. There are also several different game modes in the lobby, including a daily challenge, co-op, and hardcore mode. Now, I've never been one for DDR-style rhythm and instrument games, so I didn't think this game was going to be my style. Boy, was I wrong. Not since Shovel Knight have I been giggling uncontrollably while getting my ass handed to me by pelvic thrusting skeletons and stompy stompy dragons. There's so much going right for this game, I don't even know where to begin. I guess the first thing I should talk about is the music. Oh. My. God, the music. Danny Baranowski has absolutely killed it with the soundtrack. It's so catchy that you can't help but groove to the music as you dance your way through the dungeon. Even my girlfriend, which usually has no interest in these types of games, wanted me to turn it up when I was playing. If Danny's tunes aren't your style, the game allows you to use your own music too. While the pixel art graphics aren't super unique, the art direction comes into its own with the movement and animation of the characters and enemies. Every slime is doing their thing. Every skeleton is twerking its ass off. It all comes together to bring this unique charm and humor that I haven't seen in a roguelike before. I mean, how can you be mad at the zombies doing a conga line on your corpse. The game is challenging, but it's super fair too. While there are still items that can carry you on runs, deaths are always a result of your own positioning, timing, and experience with the enemies and items. For example, I once picked up what I assumed to be frog boots that made me move two squares at a time. I'd never seen those before, and needless to say I died really quickly. I've played this game for hours and I've never had what I considered a bullshit death. Just an experience related death, which is awesome to see in a game like this. For being early alpha, this game is pretty polished and I only have a couple of complaints. The first may be something completely on my end. I sometimes find it can be hard to keep coin multipliers alive or to consistently move and attack enemies. If I didn't love my keyboard to bits and know it was working just fine, I would think it wasn't registering key presses. I'll be moving along in a straight line and randomly miss a beat. It probably has something to do with the audio and video calibration the game makes you do when you first boot up. I could have set those wrong when I first started playing and haven't bothered to mess with them just yet. My other issue is the same apprehension I have towards all early access and alpha games, and that's content. I'm not saying that Necrodancer doesn't have enough content to justify the price, because it certainly does, even at this stage. However, like any game released in early access, there's always a danger that the game won't have all the features promised before development ends. And that would be a crime considering how much potential the game has to be a true classic. Rest assured though, the developer looks to be into this for the long haul, so I'm confident that there's nothing to worry about here. So that's my quick look at Crypt of the Necrodancer. The game is developed by Brace Yourself Games, and you can get an early access copy on Steam for $14.99. If you're a fan of roguelikes and amazing music, I wouldn't hesitate to pick this up. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like, and let me know what you think of Crypt of the Necrodancer in the comments.